George Arthur was thinking Thursday about a police officer he knew as a kid, an officer everyone called Red the Peanut Manitoba Arthur described him as a classic beat cop. He was stationed out of Buffalo's old precinct 4, and he would walk every day in rain, sun, or snow along what was the commercial heart of William Street. Everyone knew Red, Arthur said. It turns out that Red's night job involved selling peanuts, and the beat provided a perfect way of doing two things at once. Head say hello to everyday merchants and customers. Head hear their stories and their worries. Head speak with grandmothers buying groceries and barbers cutting hair. Then head check to see if he needed to fill peanut machines in those businesses, a task head perform once he was off the beat at night. The story was light, far away, but Arthur told it for a deadly serious reason. At 84, he's become an iconic figure in Buffalo, a living participant in civic history. As an African-American groundbreaker in city politics, Arthur played a key role in desegregating Buffalo's schools. He's a former common council president and mayoral candidate who spent more than 50 years in public service, a guy who was part of the group that greeted Drive. Martin Luther King Jr. Before a 1967 speech at Kleinhans Music Hall. Over the last few days, Arthur's watched with a lifetime's worth of sadness as a ruling by State Attorney General Eric Schneiderman reignited simmering divisions in the city. Investigators for the Attorney General determined that city police officers Todd C. McAllister and Nicholas J. Paris shouldn't face charges in the death last February of Wardell Davis, 20, on Hoyt Street. Schneiderman's office concluded Davis stopped breathing due to an acute asthma attack, exacerbated by physical exertion while police tried to handcuff him. The decision, released Wednesday with documents laying out the investigation, caused many advocates for the officers to say the ruling affirmed their actions. Many others, particularly within the African-American community, reacted with grief or suspicion. Within hours of that announcement, in bitter temperatures, 50 picketers showed up at the Buffalo Police Department headquarters, protesting and raising questions about the case. Arthur, whose political experience goes back to the early 1960s, said it was a mistake for Schneiderman to make such a volatile announcement from Albany. One thing I learned, Arthur said, is that you can't resolve a problem unless you bring people together and give them a chance to talk. That's a choice public officials need to make. Arthur said, even when they know constituents will passionately challenge their positions. If you just sit back and let them cuss you out at first, he said, they'll usually calm down and then you can all talk. The Attorney General should have come to Buffalo and broken the news publicly, Arthur said. There should have been an open forum in which Schneiderman or his staff could respond to the many spontaneous questions asked about the investigation. It would have relieved tension, Arthur said, instead of amplifying it. Under a 2015 order by Gov.